Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on Stronghold Kingdoms. In this video, I'm going to be talking a lot about trading in the game. And trading is just the way that you can transport resources either to a capital to sell them, or to another player's village, or your own village, to just give them resources to replenish their stockpile, or whatever you send to them. So let me go ahead and show you what researches you need to begin trading. Click on research and it's under the education tab. So the first thing you have to research is mathematics twice. And then that will allow you to get to the merchants guild. I forget which rank you have to be but it's not very high to get the uh, research for the merchants guild. So from here you can keep researching so that every mar for every market you build which a market is needed to host the merchants, I guess you would say. So if you keep upgrading this, for each market that you build, you will gain some more merchants to be able to build. And another point, um, unlike the original Stronghold Kingdoms games, you can have multiple markets in this game, which actually took me about a month to figure that out. <laughs> So some other researches to do with merchants is the transportation, which increases the speed of your merchants, and commerce, which allows you to sell within the same county, same province, same country, and eventually all over the world. So let's go ahead and let me show you how to actually start trading. First you want to do is find your village, and then you can either click on any of the capitals. You can trade to any capital building. Or any capital, I guess you'd say, such as the parish, which is probably your most most common ones, since they're the ones that are more frequent around. And you can even sell it to the county capital, which I'm not sure where this one is. And you can also sell it to the province capital, and you can also sell it to the country capital. So let me go ahead and show you how you sell some. All you have to do is click on the parish you want to trade with, or the capital you want to trade with, and click on the little merchant icon. And then we'll be brought to this screen, which will have your different resources. You'll have your trade resources, your um, your resources like wood and stone, iron pitch, your food, your weapons, and your bakery goods. And the way the markets work on here is that the more you sell, the lower the price is going to be. So for each packet of venison I buy, which is 50, tells you how much a packet's worth over here, and the price is per packet. Everything's default to 150. So the more I sell venison, if I had any, if I sold a bunch of packets to them, the price would go down, way down, if I sold a lot. And if you buy something a lot, if there's not a lot at the exchange, this tells you how much is at the exchange and how much you can actually buy from there totally. So the more you buy from there, the price would go up. It's the same basics as supply and demand. So, all you have to do, click on there, and then send your merchants out. And to get merchants, all you have to do is go to the village and get to this tab, where the same tab as the scouts and the monks are, and just buy some merchants. They're really cheap, they're only 10 gold, but they also, one thing to consider is that they take 10 unit space up. So, if you get 10 of these, it's going to uh, take up a lot of your space. So usually after I get done trading or something for the day, I'll go ahead and just disband all of these because it just takes so much space up and I don't have enough space to um, keep 400 archers on my wall. Of course on this world I'm not going to have 400 archers because it's only, I think I'm like an alderman, but on the other worlds I would have to do this to keep my villages safe by placing archers on the wall and using that extra spare unit space. So then all you have to do, like I've shown you multiple times, just go here and select how many packets you want to sell. So I can sell to 6,000 wood because each wood packet is 1,000 wood. And I can sell those for 129 gold per packet. So I just went and sold those. And as you can see, the price, it didn't show right here, but sometimes it'll just show it right here. The price will go down on the packets. 
So my trader will go ahead and trade it to there. And then once it gets there, I will receive the gold. And one thing to consider when you're sending your traders out is that once they're sent, you cannot withdraw them. So when you're selecting your parish or your village you want to send something to, just be careful and make sure that this delivery time is low or just make sure it's the place that you want to send. There have been numerous times where I would have my village right here and then the actual parish that I accidentally am on for some reason would be like way over here and it would take hours, maybe even days to get there without me realizing it. And then I would send it and then I would those traders would be gone for that long period of time. So if you had 20 traders going, that's 20 traders that you're you just lost for a long time, and it's also 200 unit, spare unit space that you're not going to be able to gain, gain back until they come back. So it takes a day to get there. There's, you're not going to have that unit space for two days. So if you want to, there's a little thing, a little technique you can use to really maximize your profits, or if you want to move a lot of resources out of your villages. And I'd recommend doing this once you have like full stockpiles. Um, if you want to move a lot of the, to sell a bunch of your resources, all your villages, uh, what you would do is go here and the cards you can play to maximize moving all your resources, all your villages, and selling them for a lot of gold would be the trade caravans cards, and combine that with the tr Carter's char Carter's char cards. There we go. And what that's going to do is just make your merchants faster, and it's going to allow them to carry more to the markets. So that's going that'll really help you move those resources out of your villages immediately. And those are both good for three hours, so you can usually move a ton of resources, get a lot of gold from that. Some people, I, if you ever watch SHK Drew's videos. I believe he trades like maybe once a week and he uses both these cards for a few hours and he can just trade and get all kinds of gold from doing that. But that's only if you, I'd recommend only if you have a bunch of resources in your stockpile. Let's see. So the main th items, if you want to get a lot of gold to make, would be weapons or banqueting goods. Those are the pretty much the main two things that usually always sell the highest. Um, some other lesser um, items that get a pretty good profit are wood, stone. Pitch usually gets a lot of gold from those. And usually vegetables and fish. Sometimes not vegetables after a long time, um, depending on how far in the world you are. Because then a lot of people just have that research by then and they'll sell it to you. But in the beginning, vegetables are definitely pretty good profit. And also fish, because you only get fish from the two river villages. So that is that. If you have a premium token, what's cool is that these little things, little buttons are here, pop up right here. There'll be a green arrow, I think it's pointing up, and then a red red arrow pointing down, or it looks something like that. But what it allows you to do is if you click it, it'll give you, like if I click on the venison or whatever, and you click on the green arrow, it'll give you the highest priced um, capital with the highest priced venison. So that'd be the best place to sell it. It's And it, it works by the... Um, it goes with them the 25 closest parishes that are around you. So if I clicked it, it'd be like all these. You'd see which one, which capital around me has the highest price for venison. And then I can just send it to it. If I have the, what's it called? Commerce research. So I can trade within the same county or the same province if it's in the other province. And if you're on the border like this, you're going to pretty much have to get the province or whatever, but if you're in the middle of the county, like right here or something, you probably won't need the 
to get the province commerce researched. And another thing to be careful of when you're sending resources to another village is that if maybe, let's say this guy right here, his capacity in weapons is 100, and I send him 150 bows. Well, the last 50 bow, well, he'll get the 100, but the, the, the other 50 bows will be completely gone because I'm sending him more than he can handle or whatever. So those will be completely gone, and you won't get those back at all. So that's one thing to be careful of. So you always want to make sure you know what their, their uh, capacity is on the items that you're sending to them. Alright, well, I believe that is it for this video. I hope you guys learned some in-depth things about trading, and I will see you guys in the next video.